Hey guys, it's Max with Max Tech. You guys asked for a photo and video comparison between the last three generation of iPhones, and today we are delivering just that. I have the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10s, and the 11 Pro. Now we're starting out doing some video clips here with the front-facing camera, and uh, the new iPhone can shoot at 4K up to 60 frames per second. We're recording at 30 right now. Let us know how it looks like. And one thing I'm seeing right now is the amount of dynamic range. The difference is pretty substantial. And not only that, the 10s crop in a lot compared to the other two so let me start moving around a little bit right here uh, and the iPhone 10 does not have extended dynamic range at all even at 1080 30 whereas the 10s does have that and uh, the new iPhone even 4k 30 it will feature that so let's start walking we're gonna test out a stabilization I'm gonna switch over to my other hand and as we walk uh, we can see which one does a better job if you're going to do vlogging or anything like that and i'm also switching between the microphones as you guys have seen so uh, you guys should be able to tell a difference in audio quality or the microphone recording quality now i'm going to run up this path and let's see how these guys handle not only this uh harsh path that i'm running on with shaky footage but also this crazy dynamic range Here's an example of 1080-60 on the 10s and 4K-60 on the 11 Pro. And of course, on the 10, we can only do uh, 1080p 30 frames per second, meaning that if you want to slow something down, it's going to be choppy. Or in regular shooting, it just won't be as smooth. On the 11 Pro, we also have the ability to do slow fees at 1080p 120 frames per second. Comparing the standard lenses stabilization, you see that the 11 Pro looks super stable, almost like it's on a gimbal, where the others are wobbly. And here I am literally running super fast and the iPhone 11 is very impressive. And this one is with the telephoto once again much improved. And of course we have the ultra wide with the cinematic stabilization that looks super smooth like a gimbal. Not only does the 11 Pro have better details, but the sky is also visible thanks to better dynamic range compared to blown out on the other two. Once again, we have more detail and more saturated colors just like the iPhone 10, where the 10s is really flat. In this autofocus test, the exposure is all over the place, really glitchy on the iPhone 10, much improved on the 10s, but perfectly smooth on the 11 Pro. Not only is the dynamic range really improved, especially on Vadim's forehead, but the iPhone 11 Pro's new ultrawide lens really allows us to capture the scene when we're standing on the small dock. Now let's test the new mic zoom feature at this waterfall. Let me know if you guys can hear the audio zoom working on the iPhone 11 Pro Max and if the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 10s sound pretty bad with the waterfall in the background. Getting into photos, this standard shot doesn't look too different between the 10s to the Pro, whereas the 10 has really off colors. Taking a portrait shot, the 11 Pro does better with edge detection and also keeps his whole jacket and pan sharp, whereas the 10s really like to blur the foreground elements. The 11 Pro also maintains more detail in the face and better highlight roll off looking more realistic. And of course with the 11 Pro we can also shoot photos using the standard lens which really shows off the location. Now for some landscape shots and as you see the ultrawide lens really gives us a really nice perspective here showing off the whole location. Comparing the standard lenses the iPhone XS is flatter with less saturation than the iPhone 10, and the 11 Pro kicks it up a notch further than the 10. Uh, with the XS we always complained about a lack of contrast and saturation. It looks like Apple finally listened and delivered. The 11 Pro's telephoto lens gives us the best of both of the other phones, the dynamic range of the 10s with the nice brighter highlights of the iPhone 10 for a really nice looking image. And next I zoomed in 10 times to check out the quality difference and the 11 Pro definitely delivers as far as detail. Here I shot right into the sun with the standard lens and the iPhone 10 has the best contrast surprisingly. The 10s looks the worst with really bad flaring and the 11 Pro does have the least flaring but also loses contrast in the center. Now time for a macro shot and the difference here is dramatic. Not only does the 11 Pro maintain all of the texture, the detail uh, of the object, the little flower thing I'm shooting, uh, but we also aren't blowing anything out and it's much more detailed. Whereas the iPhone 10 and 10s really kind of blow out the image and all the texture that we see there is just completely lost. This shot was a very interesting one. The iPhone 10 looks great on the face, maybe a little bit too bright, but nice texture. Whereas the colors were kind of off in the foliage, the 10s really focuses on the colors of the foliage, but the face has no texture, no shadowing, and really weird colors that it picked up. Whereas the 11 Pro combines the best of both of the other cameras and gives us a great detailed image with really good colors. 
Now it's time for a portrait selfie. Apple made a ton of changes this year. The biggest, most obvious one is probably the amount of blur in the background. It is way more than before. Uh, I actually prefer the iPhone XS's blur, but of course you can tweak that in post. The next thing is that in the hair, in the shadows, I can still see all the hairs instead of being pure black. And the detail in my face and in my facial hair is really much more than before. Now another change is that the jacket is no longer blurred out like Apple used to do on the iPhone 10 and 10s. Here's a regular portrait shot that shows a really dramatic difference. Uh, the skin tones and detail are much better on the iPhone 10 and even better on the 11 Pro, whereas the 10s, the Smart HDR, is making it kind of flat. And one thing you'll notice on the left-hand side of Adim's face, uh, the 11 Pro really messes up on the blur, and I think it's because it's cranked up to about 2.8, uh, but it's not getting the edge detection as good. But then the detail on the shirt and the jacket are much better. And of course, with the 11 Pro, we have the ability to shoot portraits with a standard lens, which really shows off the location. In this portrait, the extra blur looks really nice with the nice leading walkway. You'll also notice more detail, and if we punch in, that is very visible, especially in the hair. The iPhone 10 completely blows out the right side of his face, and it lacks detail, it just has a little bit too much sharpening. The iPhone XS looks a lot better, and the 11 Pro not only has way more detail, but the highlight roll-off and the shadowing on the face looks much more natural and like an actual camera. All three phones nail this very difficult portrait shot of these posts. The edging is really good. You do notice a difference in the amount of blur from the 10 to the 10s to 11 Pro. It increases with every generation by default. And of course, with the 11 Pro and 10s, you can actually tweak that blur in post, whereas the iPhone 10, you cannot adjust that. And it looks so much better with the 11 Pro having that extra blur. Now, another difference is that we now have high key mono available. It doesn't look great for this shot, but at least it's able to pull it off where it looks weird on the 10s, and of course we don't have that with the 10. And in this last shot of the waterfall, this really just shows off how much more you can capture compared to having a standard lens. Not only that, we have a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation with the 11 Pro, and a lot more of the cloud detail up above. The iPhone 11 Pro's telephoto lens has been dramatically improved, and we could tell that in this 10x zoom. Not only does the sign look a lot more detailed, and the digital zooming, the algorithm is much better, we just get so much more detail on the sign and also in the background with the trees where it's just kind of blurred out with the other ones. Here's another example of the 11 Pro taking the best of both worlds from the 10 and 10s. Uh, the 10 had better colors and contrast on the face but blew out the highlights. 10s did better with the highlights but it was really flat, whereas 11 Pro maybe is a little bit too contrasty, but definitely a nice out of the box photo that you don't have to edit. Now it's time to test low light. We are gonna start off with video and here there's this 4K60 that is slowed down. You can see how much better the stabilization is in this slow motion. Instead of having little jitters like the 10s and the 10, the 11 Pro is very smooth. Not only that, but we also have a lot better dynamic range, whereas the lights on the inside are retained instead of being blown out, and with less noise as well. With really low light, the iPhone 10 has a ton of noise, the 10s kind of improves on that, and the 11 Pro has the least amount of noise and is also the brightest. Now for some low light photos, you can see the red robin sign is completely blown out on iPhone 10. We start seeing some color with the 10s, and with the iPhone 11 Pro, it actually looks just like it does in real life. Exposing for the Starbucks sign, if you look below, you can see how dark the shots are on the 10 and the 10s, whereas 11 Pro has much better dynamic range to maintain that detail. And if we expose for the shadows, you could see that the 11 Pro has more detail, but then if we crop in, how much of the highlights are still retained because of the better dynamic range. The same thing goes for this shot where the iPhone 10 literally blows out the Dolby sign, you can't even read it. The 10s a little bit better, but the 11 Pro maintains all of that and we get much better colors and contrast with better details as well. With this shot, we have a dramatic difference where the iPhone 10 not only makes a net super dark, the background in the picture is actually blown out at the same time. The 10s does a better job, but the 11 Pro keeps all of the details in the background and makes her and her clothes much brighter and more colorful. In this selfie, the iPhone 10 blows out the whole background so you can't even tell that it's an Apple store. The XS is a bit better and the 11 Pro is even better, maintaining all of the dynamic range and having a little bit better colors as well. Another massive difference with the iPhone 10 giving us a really dark image when using portrait mode and blowing out the background, the XS is a little bit better with its f2.4 lens, but the new f2.0 lens and more sensitive sensor in the 11 Pro 
gives us a bright, sharp, and colorful image with good dynamic range. And once again, we are able to use the standard lens, which really shows off the location, but also is better in low light, giving us a lot more detail and less noise. And even without night mode, the 11 Pro is able to capture so much more light than the other two phones can, so we can actually see the subject that we're taking a photo of. Now finally, let's get into night mode, and one thing I love about the iPhone's night mode is that it still looks like it's nighttime. It doesn't make it look like daytime. It just increases the colors, the contrast, and the details. This image really shows off what night mode is capable of. Not only do we have accurate colors from the street lights, we also see stars in the sky. We have much more detail in the shadows. It, the whole image is brighter and more colorful instead of being either too dark or with really off colors and odd texture in the sky. But the trees have so much more detail and we can see those little stars instead of being all smeared. This was taken in a very dark closet and you can see that the 11 Pro has tons of detail and it really makes the image look like the light was turned on. Another dramatic difference here with night mode, we see so much more detail. Uh, it actually looks like an image that is usable compared to the 10s, which looks really bad and the 10 which looks horrendous. All of the iPhones do a surprisingly good job in this dark interior shot. The 11 Pro of course has more detail, a little bit more colors and contrast so it looks better. But with the 11 Pro we also have the ability to shoot with the ultra wide lens. This lets us capture the whole scene but of course it is not as good in low light so we do have some denoising and less details overall. The same thing goes for this location where the ultra wide lens lets us capture the whole scenery instead of just a small crop. So so thank you guys for watching. Let us know if any of these comparison images really stood out to you. We would love to hear your guys' opinions and click above to subscribe and down below to enable notifications if you guys want to see videos in the future. On the right hand side, we have some really solid suggestions if you guys want to see something else. This has been Max with Max Tech and I will see you in the next video.